Welcome to the PathMD video tutorial. Topic Lymphoma, case number one. We are appreciative to Red Path Integrated Pathology for their sponsorship of this video tutorial series. This case comes from a 54-year-old male with a clinical history of inguinal lymphadenopathy. You'll notice that the architecture of this lymph node is effaced by a predominantly diffuse process with scattered vessels and other scattered clear cells intermingled uh, with this relatively monomorphic population. At medium power, we can see the lymphoma cells in relation to uh, vessels and histiocytes. You'll also note there is abundant karyorectic debris indicating uh, increased cell turnover. And this is the high power view of the malignant lymphoid infiltrate. So when you examine the H&E findings in this case, you'll note primarily three things. One, that this has a diffuse pattern. Secondly, the lymphoid cell infiltrate size is best classified as intermediate. And third, it has a high proliferation index, noted uh, by the abundant karyorectic debris and also the scattered histiocytes uh, in that a diffuse pattern is also indicative of a process with increased cell turnover. So next, let's look at the flow cytometry findings in this case. The flow cytometry showed a kappa-restricted lymphoid process that had variable co-expression of CD19, CD20, and CD10. There was not any uh, co-expression of CD5 uh, detected in the process. So at this point in the diagnostic process, uh, we should have a fairly restricted uh, differential diagnosis. And from this differential, differential diagnosis, uh, we'll do some confirmatory uh, immunostains. And just based on the flow cytometry findings, obviously we know it's a lymphoma, both morphologically and by flow cytometry. You can essentially have three uh, lymphoma processes that co-express CD10. That would be a diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, a follicular lymphoma, or a Burkitt-type lymphoma. Now we'll look at special stains. Before we do this, you should ask yourself, what stains would you order uh, to confirm the diagnosis that you suspect? So as you consider those, uh, we'll look at the two stains ordered in this case. This is the BCL2 stain. And what you'll notice is that small lymphoid cells in the background show strong expression, but the malignant lymphoid infiltrate appears largely negative. The second stain performed is KI67, which is a proliferation index marker. This is a nuclear stain, and you'll notice that almost all of the cells uh, stain positive. It's important to compare this stain with, say, a T-cell marker, uh, where you'll know what the background lymphoid infiltrate is so that you won't underestimate the proliferation index. So based on these findings, the best diagnosis for this case is a Burkitt lymphoma. Now some, uh, because the cell population is not completely uniform, might consider this as an atypical Burkitt lymphoma, but the new WHO classification essentially lumps these together as Burkitt lymphoma. Now, it's important to remember that Burkitt lymphoma is a CD19 or CD20 positive lymphoma with co-expression of CD10. Immunostaining for BCL2 is usually negative and the KI67 or the proliferation index is essentially 100%. Now, common questions that are often associated with the diagnosis of Burkitt lymphoma revolve around molecular characteristics. So the simplest question would be, what is 
the most common translocation associated with Burkitt lymphoma. This would be the translocation between chromosome 8 and chromosome 14, linking the MYC gene with the immunoglobulin heavy chain at 14Q32. Now, a what I call a 2 to 3 neuron question would be, you know, if say this was a lambda restricted Burkitt lymphoma and they did not have the most common 814 translocation, what would you expect the molecular findings to be? In this situation, you need to recognize that alternative translocations for Burkitt lymphomas include the kappa receptor on chromosome 2 with chromosome 14 and the lambda receptor on chromosome 22 with chromosome 14. So I always think of this as I always say kappa, lambda, and chromosome 2 comes before chromosome 22. So kappa goes with chromosome 2, lambda goes with chromosome 22. So in this type of question, the correct answer would involve chromosome uh, 22.